Do you ever wonder what's really happening inside you when you knock back a drink? Would you like to know how to cure hangovers? Every sip of alcohol sets off a chain reaction that travels from your taste, a hangover. E buds to the deepest corners of your body. This video is not for the faint of heart and may change your perception about alcohol forever. I'm not sure if you can handle it. In this video, we are going to explore what alcohol does to your body and brain from the very moment you take a sip. Whether you enjoy a casual drink or are just curious about the science of it, this journey under the influence of alcohol is going to be an eye-opener. Stay till the end as we share some pro tips to recover faster from a hangover. The drink first lands in your mouth and then heads straight to your stomach. If your stomach's almost empty, alcohol gets a fast track to your bloodstream, like skipping the queue. That's why when you drink on an empty stomach, the effects hit you quickly. Drinking alcohol on an empty stomach finds a VIP pass straight into your bloodstream. After its quick stop in your stomach, alcohol takes the express route to your small intestine, then gets absorbed into your bloodstream at full speed. The small intestine is a champ at soaking up alcohol and distributing it throughout your body. It's not just chilling in your stomach, it's getting a full tour of your body, from head to toe, including your brain. So, you may be wondering how to slow down alcohol absorption then? Food in your stomach slows down the rate at which alcohol is absorbed into your bloodstream. Without food, alcohol passes quickly to the small intestine, where it's absorbed rapidly. Eating before drinking ensures that alcohol is absorbed more slowly, reducing its immediate impact. Once absorbed into your bloodstream, alcohol eventually reaches your liver, the primary site for alcohol metabolism. The liver can only process a certain amount of alcohol at a time, which is why consuming alcohol faster than your liver can metabolize it leads to intoxication and drunkenness. Let's geek out for a moment. The liver cells contain an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase, ADH. This enzyme begins the process of breaking down ethanol. ADH converts ethanol into acetaldehyde, a highly toxic substance and a known carcinogen. In other words, this is where alcohol is transformed into acetaldehyde, a toxic chemical. Your liver usually does a good job turning it into less harmful stuff, but let's not sugarcoat here. Acetaldehyde is a toxin, and your liver has to convert it into a non-toxic form. This is why we often say that your liver is working overtime when drinking alcohol. This taxing detoxification process even takes place with only one drink. Your liver is the housekeeper and it starts cleaning up the moment that alcohol enters your digestive system and bloodstream. And if you drink more than your liver can handle, it starts to struggle. Your liver starts juggling more than it can manage. Let's all be grateful for our liver. As we have discussed in a previous video, drinking too much can lead to fatty liver disease. That's when your liver starts storing fat because it's overloaded. This isn't rare. In the US, up to 25% of people have fatty liver disease due to alcohol use. Keep it up and you risk cirrhosis, where your liver becomes scarred and struggles to work properly. About 10-20% of heavy drinkers develop cirrhosis. That's a big number. So in summary, chronic alcohol consumption can overwhelm the liver's ability to process alcohol, leading to the accumulation of fatty deposits in the liver, also called fatty liver disease, inflammation, alcoholic hepatitis, and or permanent scarring, cirrhosis. Yikes, but don't lose hope. Your liver is amazing at healing itself within limits. If you cut back on alcohol, you give your liver a fighting chance to recover. It's not a quick fix, but it's doable. By drinking less, you're giving your liver the break it needs to repair. It's about pacing yourself and letting your liver catch up. Stay until the end as we continue to explore the less talked about effects of alcohol that may surprise you. But when alcohol enters your bloodstream, it's like it knows exactly where to go, straight to your brain. It easily bypasses the blood-brain barrier, which usually acts like a bouncer, keeping out unwanted substances. But alcohol gets through without a hitch. Inside the brain, alcohol starts interacting with neurotransmitters, the chemicals that are essentially the brain's messaging system. It mainly affects serotonin, GABA, and dopamine. These neurotransmitters are crucial in regulating mood and feelings. Initially, this interaction might feel great. You get a rush of euphoria and feel lighter, almost like your brain is throwing a party within a party. However, this temporary high can mislead you about the actual effects. Alcohol's boost of dopamine, the feel-good neurotransmitter, is significant. It's like your brain is rewarded every time you drink, which initially feels amazing, flooded with happiness and pleasure. 
But as you drink more often, your brain gets accustomed to these high levels of dopamine. Gradually, it starts expecting and even demanding more alcohol to achieve the same pleasurable feelings. This tolerance buildup can quickly turn into dependence, trapping you in a cycle where your brain feels it needs alcohol to function. Over time, your brain might start thinking it needs alcohol to feel that good feeling, which is one reason why people might keep drinking or even drink too much. It's a deceptive trap. It's habit forming and escaping this vicious cycle can be challenging. Let's keep talking about how alcohol messes up your brain chemistry. Two words, serotonin and GABA. Alcohol's impact on serotonin and GABA is equally concerning and is a double whammy. These neurotransmitters are associated with happiness and relaxation. Alcohol initially increases their levels, leading to feelings of well-being and calm. But, as the effects of alcohol wear off, the sudden drop in these neurotransmitters leads to mood swings and anxiety. Your brain's chemical balance is on a roller coaster, and the lows can be quite unsettling. In fact, it's not uncommon to feel lethargic and slow moving after a big night of drinking. Chronic alcohol use poses serious risks to brain health. It's no joke. Regular or heavy drinking can lead to cognitive impairments, memory issues, and even damage to nerve cells, neuropathy. The impact is not subtle. Studies have shown that heavy drinkers can experience a reduction in brain volume and significant changes in brain structure and chemistry. These changes are not just about momentary forgetfulness. They represent long-term, potentially irreversible damage to your brain's functioning. It's hard to believe that very little is spoken about this. Would it be because drinking is socially and widely accepted? Alcohol, much like smoking was in the 1970s, holds a deeply entrenched position in social and cultural norms around the world. In the 1970s, smoking on flights and in many public spaces was not only common but also socially accepted, reflecting a broader societal tolerance. Similarly, today, alcohol is widely embraced in a variety of social contexts, from casual gatherings to major celebrations. Its presence is almost expected at events like weddings, parties, and even business functions. This widespread acceptance often overlooks the potential health risks associated with alcohol consumption, echoing how smoking was once viewed as a harmless, integral part of socializing. Just as smoking on airplanes was a norm until health risks prompted change, the current social endorsement of alcohol persists despite growing awareness of its potential harms highlighting a fascinating aspect of social behavior and its evolution over time. You'll want to stick around for what's coming next. The phenomenon of anxiety, the anxiety experience post-drinking, is another important aspect to consider. When alcohol leaves the system, the nervous system goes into a sort of hyperactive state to compensate for the previous depressive effect of alcohol. This rebound can leave you feeling anxious, jittery, or down. It's like your brain is frantically trying to restore balance after the disruption caused by alcohol, but the process can feel like an emotional storm. The shocking truth is that this uphill battle can last for days after drinking. Next up, let's talk about how alcohol messes with your sleep. You might think a drink before bed helps you sleep better, but it's the opposite. Alcohol disrupts your REM sleep, which is the deep, restful part of your sleep cycle. REM sleep is super important because it's when your brain processes memories and emotions and your body repairs itself. You might fall asleep quickly when you drink, but your sleep quality is pretty poor. You're missing out on that valuable REM sleep, making you tired and groggy the next day. It's like trying to recharge your phone, but the charger keeps unplugging. Studies have shown that even moderate alcohol consumption can significantly decrease REM sleep, and chronic alcohol use can lead to persistent sleep problems. So simply put, you wake up the next day feeling lethargic, unrefreshed, and tired. Moving on to your gut, alcohol has a significant impact there too. Your gut is home to trillions of bacteria, the gut microbiome, which play a huge role in your health. They help with digestion, protect against infection, and even affect your mood and immune system. When you drink alcohol, it disturbs this delicate balance by harming the good bacteria and allowing harmful bacteria to grow. This can lead to all sorts of problems, like bloating, gas, and even more serious conditions like leaky gut syndrome and inflammation. In fact, research has found that even a single episode of heavy drinking can significantly alter the balance of bacteria in your gut. This can have serious long-term implications like weakening your immune system, making you more prone to getting sick, 
As we've told you, this video is not for the faint of heart. Drinking can put a lot of strain on your cardiovascular system. It makes your heart work over time by raising your blood pressure, which, over time, increases the risk of heart disease. It can also cause irregular heart rhythms, known as arrhythmias, which can feel like your heart is racing or fluttering. And there's cardiomyopathy, a condition where the heart muscle weakens and can't pump blood as well. All these issues are serious because your heart is crucial for pumping blood and oxygen around your body. The effects on the heart are especially concerning when you consider how alcohol impacts other parts of your body, like your liver and brain. It's all interconnected. Damage in one area can lead to problems in another. For example, high blood pressure caused by drinking can lead to liver damage and vice versa. Delving into the less talked about effects of alcohol, it's important to highlight its link with certain cancers and the immune system. Drinking alcohol isn't just about dealing with a hangover the next day. It can increase your risk of developing various types of cancer, including breast, liver, colon, and throat cancer. Research indicates that alcohol contributes to about 3.5% of all cancer deaths in the U.S. annually. That's a significant number, and it's something that's not always on people's radar when they enjoy a drink. What's more, alcohol can weaken your immune system. This means your body's defense system against illnesses gets compromised. If you're drinking often, you might find yourself getting sick more frequently. Finally, the thing about alcohol is that its effects don't just disappear once you've sobered up. They can stick around for a while. This isn't just about feeling rough the morning after. The effects can last for days or even weeks, depending on how much and how often you drink. You might not see these effects right away, but over time, they add up. And that's why moderation is so key. Are you ready for the pro tips to recover faster from a hangover? Alcohol depletes your body's reserves of vitamins and minerals. Consider taking certain vitamins before consuming alcohol. It can potentially help in reducing the severity of hangovers. Here's a list of some key vitamins and how they might help. Make sure to take a complex of B vitamins. B vitamins, especially B1, thiamine, B6, and B12, are crucial in the metabolism of alcohol in your body. If you feel ambitious, you can add vitamin C and magnesium to the mix. While not a vitamin, N-acetylcysteine, NAC, is a supplement that can boost levels of glutathione, a key antioxidant in the liver. It's important to note that while these vitamins and supplements can aid in mitigating some effects of a hangover, they are not foolproof methods and do not prevent all negative effects of alcohol consumption. The best way to avoid a hangover is to drink in moderation, stay hydrated, and ensure you're eating properly. Additionally, always consult with a healthcare provider before starting any supplement regimen, especially if you have health conditions or are taking other medications. As we wrap up our journey together, tell us what hangover symptoms you dislike the most after a night of drinking or even better. Tell us about your preferred go-to remedy in the comments section below. Show us some love. Would you be against hitting that like and subscribe button? Let's stay connected. See you in the next video.